specifically requesting an allocation of machines. We'll probably see this evolve in the Rocky cycle, or not Rocky, the train cycle to enable uh, integration with placement. And we also uh, received a kind donation from the DMTF, which was the Distributed Management Task Force of a Redfish BIOS, inter or BIOS configuration interface, which means if you have Redfish BMCs, you can now change settings on them, as long as they're standards compliant. A couple other things. Uh, we now have the ability to have custom Pixie templates. So on a node level, you can say, I want this node to be deployed with the special Pixie template that does the super special other thing. We can also define whether clean, automated cleaning applies to a specific node or specific nodes in a cluster. We now have an HP ILO, ILO 5 hardware type, which uh, enables out of band RAID configuration. Huawei was also uh, generous and added an IBMC uh, driver to, or hardware type to Ironic this cycle as well. We added a few more fields to our API, specifically for tracking uh, description of nodes. This was more of a enablement for operators uh, in the Asia Pacific uh, community where they couldn't actually, they basically had to store and search for multi byte uh, strings. So if you want to describe a node, it turns out our name limitation wasn't very useful for them. We also have a, protect, a protected field, which allows an operator to say, don't do anything with this node. Don't let anyone move this node out of the state. Um, it mainly protects uh, basically accidental deletions of, of machines. We also now support the ability to directly deploy um, images from a HP web server running locally on the conductor. This allows the direct deploy interface to operate without Swift and while still using Glance images. We now also support parallel erasure of disks during cleaning. It is not enabled by default it, because we didn't want to change the overall behavior, but it is available. We also split the iPixie and Pixie boot interfaces so that an operator can define these machines are Pixie only, these machines are iPixie only. The case where this would be is where we, if you had power hardware and x86 hardware, and you need to have them in the same cluster. And the last feature we probably merged, or I think it was actually the very last feature we merged, was uh, what we call fast track deployments, where is essentially if the agent is already online and running by some means, we will basically not power the machine off, and it will immediately trigger deployment on that machine. So that can remove multiple reboot cycles from a deployment. So it's incredibly powerful in terms of getting a deployment done quickly. So when we talk about train, we're still forming our, our ideas for train and what direction we'll be taking on the train. Oh, come on. <laughs> So one thing that we're probably going to see is software RAID. CERN has actually been working on contributing software RAID support for Ironic. It is going to be uh, somewhat specific in the design, but that's because it's their use case. It's one that they can show that works for them and works for others as well. We did merge SmartNIC support into Ironic during the trains or during the sign cycle. It did not merge in a neutron during the uh, sign cycle either, though. Sorry. We anticipate it will merge in Neutron during early train, which will mean that once both projects are released, one should be able to actually orchestrate configuration through SmartNix. We're probably going to see integration with the placement service this cycle. Uh, there's no guarantees there. There's just lots of discussion amongst many teams about doing this, this cycle. And we're starting to look at using MDNS discovery so that you could possibly have a pre-burnt image on a machine or a thumb drive of an ironic that could possibly def uh, identify and find ironic without any additional assistance. But we need your help. So please tell us what you would most find useful if it was in or a part of ironic. And what would you possibly do to popularize the use of ironic? You don't have to answer now, you can tell us later. <laughs> and if you want to give feedback, I failed to schedule a feedback session. <laughs> but we're always on IRC. 
pound open stack cash ironic on irc.freenode.net. And you can always email the OpenStack discuss mailing list and tag us, and we'll hopefully respond quickly. If you're inter interested in contributing, we have an onboarding session today next door, next door at 5, 10 PM. Uh, otherwise, join Pound OpenStack Ironic on IRC and say good morning and ask questions. If anyone needs any more information, we have some wonderful links here. They're fairly boilerplate. Mm -hmm. And thanks, everyone. Do we have any questions? With the fast track deployments, would it be possible to have a setup where we keep some nodes on standby, boot that into the agent, so that we can deploy like this? I don't see why not. You just have to tell, get them to boot somehow. And that might be a future feature. Any other questions? It's kind of like uh, eternally in progress. Uh, I know that um, it is possible already to use an NHA configuration. Actually, Triple O, I think, has support for that. Um, it's a bit inconvenient to do. And I'm not sure we ever make it really convenient. But uh, the only bit which is missing and which you hope to um, fix in train is um, the fact that the current ironic inspector process is uh, a merged API and worker process, and we want to s split it away. But it raises some interesting discussion on how to avoid a hard dependency on RabbitMQ, which, as we just told, we got rid of uh, for ironic. So but we, hopefully it will be done and trained. For the record, the question is uh, about ironic inspector service and if it it's, would be available in a highly available configuration. Um, I believe Dimitri addressed that quite well. Thank you. Any other questions while, we, while we're still here? Yes? Um, just in terms of uh, hardware vendor contribution, um, do you see any trends over in uh, like Pyronic? I mean, is it, it feels like there's not a lot lately. Uh, the question is, do we see any trends in hardware vendor contribution? We see some, some vendors that have decided to kind of step away from the community or pull back from the community very heavily. Uh, we've seen kind of their contributions disappear or minimize. But we've also seen new vendors come into the community and work with us. Um, we're still getting some of those vendors up to speed, though. And they are trying to figure out what their roadmap looks like from where, what their customers need. So if, you're, if you have a vendor and you, that you buy hardware from and you have specific needs for their drivers, it's best to actually work with them and communicate to them that to them. Since you're their customer, we're just a community they work with. Is there, is there like a thought process around what the steady state of, let's say, a bare metal that's not yet in use should be? I think right now it's just power off. But would there be a situation where you could like put it into some live OS, but then still show as available to provision? So So the question is, uh, is there a concept of a decoupled state that would allow a machine to be booted and operated and inspected and basically maintained independently of the state machine? Uh, that's not really something we've thought about. Um, it's definitely something we should probably consider. Service image, sort of a concept, right? Exactly, yes. Some sort of service image. You could combine that with sort of the fast track stuff. Yep, yeah, yes, absolutely. And cleaning and deployment templates. All. Are you are you meaning more in the terms of, of just maintenance interactions? No, I mean in the terms of I have maybe let's say twenty machines. Mm -hmm.
Yes. I don't want them off. So I want them on and you know, recording and alerting because let's say okay. I want to know when the hardware dies or fan fails versus and then when I provision on it, I know I can actually move so I can move them between available and maintenance even without them being provisioned because based on like let's say the state, so that I don't find out when I do try to provision. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. I think uh, the, you're, what you're really seeking is more of a fault detection of hardware and keeping that machine on so that you don't, so you identify the failure before it, you try and deploy on it. That's definitely something we should talk about and we might end up talking about tomorrow or the day after in, during the PTG. Any other questions? What, we have about four minutes left. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you everyone.